Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexandra Green, and today we are going to look at tips and strategies to add spice to your online lesson. So, you're going to teach online. It's of paramount importance that you choose a platform that suits you, one that you feel comfortable using. Let's take a look now at some digital tools and platforms. First of all, we have Skype, a simple platform that includes video, chat box and the share screen feature and the ability to record the lesson. But please note that not all features can be accessed on all devices. Then we have Zoom, a more advanced platform that includes video, chat box, interactive whiteboard, share screen feature, breakout rooms and the ability to record the lesson. Moving on, we have Appear In, which offers similar features to Skype, but there is no need for learners to log in. They simply click on the link you send them. Then there's WebEx, which is very similar to Zoom with video, chat box and the share screen feature. Here, students merely click on the link you send them once again. And we also have Microsoft Teams in Office 365, which offers audio, video, screen sharing and instant messaging. We're now going to take a look at platform features and how they can be exploited, available depending on the platform you choose. There's the tick icon. Students show the teacher when they finish reading the task, for example, so that the teacher knows when to move on to the next activity or exercise. We have the share screen feature. Teachers may share computer screens with students in order for them to see the interactive whiteboard software, images, texts, and so on and so forth. There is the notes feature. In this section, teachers are able to clarify language, how to form structures, for example, or give a description of lexical items, synonyms, antonyms, definitions. Hand. This is the raise hand feature. Students may use this to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question, if they require clarification, as remember, at the beginning of your online lesson, it's advisable for you to ask your students to turn off their mics in order for there not to be background noise. There are breakout rooms. These can be used during a speaking activity for pair work in the lead in and also when students are required to complete the first speaking task when the other half of the class is performing the second speaking task. So you're still able to divide your class online using the breakout rooms feature. Then we have the chat box. Here, teachers may elicit useful phrases for the speaking task, uh, set a listening task for students, and to elicit corrections to errors. And the interactive whiteboard feature. Here, you may get your students to complete useful phrases they can use in the speaking tasks, for example, or you may introduce useful phrases. Here are some digital tools you may use during your lesson. Real-time board a free interactive whiteboard tool that can be used on platforms without a whiteboard via the share screen feature. Google Drive. Here you may share documents with your students. Save your document into Google Drive and send them a link to it. They will then open it in Google Docs and they can edit it. There's Padlet an online notice board tool that allows learners to add comments, links, documents, and record their voice. Primary pad. You may create a document that more than one learner can work on at the same time. And Miro, interactive whiteboard software tool. 
Let's now move on to the lesson per se. The question is, which key skills do I need to bear in mind when teaching online? First and foremost, I need to set clear learning goals. You need to be able to plan and set clear learning goals so that your lesson has a clear purpose. Planning. You need to ensure there's no dead time during your lesson, which again means you need to plan your lesson well. Of course, good management skills are of paramount importance. You'll need to adapt the skills you use in the face-to-face -face classroom to your online learning environment. For example, you will set up tasks, give clear-cut instructions, check your learners have understood the tasks by demonstrating activities, and build a rapport, all of which may be more challenging online initially. Gesture. Gesture is an amazing mean of communication, one that should never be underestimated. You may use gesture to encourage your students to speak during error correction. You may use it to count the number of syllables in a word. And for younger learners, you can demonstrate, read, listen, write, and so on and so forth, thereby limiting the use of L1 in your online classroom. Establishing and building a rapport. This may appear to be more challenging online than in the classroom. As you don't see your students physically, it's important to create a rapport built on mutual respect and understanding. Bringing energy into an online lesson. Turn up to your online lesson full of positive energy and maintain it throughout your lesson. Here are some top tips for developing a rapport with your students. As we previously said, bring in your personality. Get to know your students from day one. Smile throughout the lesson. Personalize the lesson according to the needs of your students. Give encouragement and praise where praise is due. Chat to your students before and after the lesson. Be friendly yet professional and encourage your learners to get to know each other. Your question is, I'm new to this. Where do I begin? First of all, you begin by doing a needs analysis. You'll need to familiarize yourself with your learners, their interests, why they are learning, what they are good at. This will help you plan an effective lesson. Remember, planning is key, but always have a backup plan. Ensure your plan carefully and anticipate potential problems so you are prepared. Make sure you have a variety of different materials at hand. In the digital classroom, you aren't able to move around, so you need to have a variety of different activities and materials to help you out. Ensure your technology works and is ready for use. Check in advance. This will help your lesson, lesson to go more smoothly. Know your platform and practice using it. It's important for you to be able to use your chosen platform carefully and confidently. Watch tutorials, practice with friends and family before you actually start using it for professional purposes. Know your teaching materials. Just like you would in a classroom setting, make sure you're familiar with the materials you plan to use during the lesson. Make sure the students are confident with how the class works. Establish classroom rules from day one and make expectations clear to the learners. This will assist in the smooth running of the lesson. Run an orientation lesson prior to your first lesson. This will help you and your students alike and you will all feel more confident with technology. And remember, use your face. Your face is what your students can see on the screen. So make sure you smile, use gesture, 
expressions of encouragement. Let's take a look at teaching the skills online. Teaching reading, speaking, listening and writing varies slightly for online from the classroom environment. However, it is not necessarily less effective. While teaching the four skills can feel easier face to face in a number of ways because you are in the same room as your learners, it is possible to adapt and teach reading, listening, writing and speaking successfully online. As always, you will set the context by using pictures, creating a cartoon, using a film clip, telling an anecdotal story, using an avatar, using drawings, a short text, creating a short video presentation or using realia props. Let's take a look at reading. Teaching reading online can be as effective as teaching it face to face and it can be integrated with other skills. Handouts, books are replaced by ebooks and interactive whiteboard software. There are many digital books and websites that you can extract text or a story from and share with your students. Many video conference platforms such as Zoom, Webex, Appear In and Skype have the screen sharing feature, as we previously mentioned, which is quite useful for reading lessons. Additionally, Students can use the drawing tools on Zoom or Webex for annotation on the screen, which is great when they are scanning or skimming a text. Either you or your students can take a screenshot of their reading materials, save it as a picture or PDF and add it to the cloud or a Google Drive folder, thus going paperless, protecting the environment and staying focused and organised. Online versus face-to-face -face reading. The real difference is not between reading in an online lesson and reading in the classroom. It is whether the reading is done in the lesson or for homework. At home or in the lesson. This will depend on the text type, task and the age of the learners. For example, young learners are more likely to read texts in the lesson as they require more support from the teacher, whereas adult learners are more likely to read texts at home as they prefer to read independently. Generally, if the lesson focus is reading for specific information, the learners can do the reading in class, as you may encourage learners to scan read and not read everything, and you may set a time limit. However, if the lesson focus is reading for detailed information, the learners can do the reading for homework, as this is time consuming and during the online lesson, time can be better spent focusing on speaking and communicative activities. If the text is set for homework, you'll need to spend the following lesson going over it, going over the answers and you may do some follow up language work, for example. When deciding whether to administer reading in the lesson or at home, the first step is to think about the age of the learner, whether or not the learner will need support, how much reading needs to be done, and how lesson time is best spent. How do I share reading material? You may display the text on a whiteboard as it can be displayed quickly and easily in class and all learners can see what you want them to see. You may also display the text on your screen and share your screen with the learners during the lesson. You may provide learners with a handout before the lesson, via email for example, so they can print out the handout and also have it after the lesson has ended. Or you may provide learners with a link to the text during the lesson as they may quickly click on the link and access the text. 
they also have access to the text after the lesson has ended in this way. Let's take a look at some tools for developing reading skills. Breaking news, English.com, up-to-date lesson materials based around a recent news report. Newsinlevels.com, recent news stories graded for different levels. LearnEnglishBritishCouncil.org, short stories for your younger learners. LearnEnglishKids.BritishCouncil.org, videos of short stories with subtitles. Moving on, we're going to look at listening. Despite being a more receptive skill, listening should be integrated with a productive speaking skill. You will need to ensure the students can listen to the videos and audio files as well as listen to you. On Zoom and WebEx, for example, you can share the computer audio, which will enable the student to listen to the sound as clear as it can be. All listening tasks can be perfectly conducted online, such as pre-listening tasks, watching a video or listening to an audio file, post-listening tasks and decoding techniques with the help of the whiteboard, chat box or by sharing resources on the screen. The audio can be rewound as many times as needed. Here are some suggested online activities. The activity is jigsaw listening and the objective to understand the speaker's opinion and his her justification for that opinion. The activity is a song. The objective to implicitly learn new vocabulary and language in an engaging way. The activity is a film clip. The objective to use body language and facial expressions to understand meaning. The activity is questions. The objective to recognize weak forms and connected speech, for example. And the activity is which photo? The objective to understand prepositions of place. Here are some suggested sites in order to enable learners to improve their listening skills. Mm -hmm. Sound Foundation's Interactive Phonemic Chart. A free interactive version of the phonemic chart. You can click on each sound for students to hear or alternatively download a non-interactive version. Sounds, the pronunciation app. Your students can study sounds and practice using them. Forvo, a free pronunciation dictionary. Students can listen to how words, including names of places, are pronounced by people around the world. Ship or sheep, free practice of minimal pairs. English Central, a website and app. Your students may watch a video, learn the words, record themselves copying the pronunciation and get a grade. BBC Learning English a free pronunciation workshop uh, in videos that look at sounds of English, including weak forms and assimilation. More tools for developing listening skills. CBBs, games, puzzles, songs for younger learners. TEDx ESL, lessons built around TED Talks. Hello, short conversations on audio or video between people all over the world across a number of different levels, accompanied by multiple choice questions and often vocabulary tasks. Lyrics training, a fun free tool that allows students to type in missing words to lyrics as they watch a music video. There is also an app available. Let's now take a look at writing. When teaching writing in a classroom setting, teachers often don't dedicate the necessary time as it is time consuming and is generally assigned for homework. 
Teaching writing online can be a fun and enjoyable experience as long as you are aware of the tools available and you stimulate your students' creativity. Writing is a process that involves thinking, brainstorming ideas, polishing them, thinking about the structure, connecting ideas, proofreading, and so on and so forth. At lower levels, writing out a jumbled word sentence from a text shared on the screen is a writing task. Similarly, at higher levels, it is of paramount importance that you set the context of any writing activities and design an integrated skills lesson. For instance, priming the students with a discussion speaking about the text in pairs helps students come up with creative ideas and motivates them to write. Also, another great way to get students to write online is through a collaborative writing activity. This can be done by sharing a Google Docs file where each student is able to write at the same time on the same file. You can use Google Docs to create a handout, including a model text and exercises. Just before the lesson, you may share a link with your students. The handout gives students the information they need to be able to leave the online lesson and write their own well-organized paragraph. You can also encourage students to complete gap fill exercises on a PowerPoint presentation by completing sentences on the slide. You will most probably set writing for homework, however, pre and post writing activities will be done in class. The teacher shows a model. Together with students, the teacher will analyze the structure, the layout and some language and do language input. The teacher will then give feedback after writing has been completed. For pre-writing activities, mind maps and spidergrams are great ways to brainstorm ideas. Padlet and Answer Garden are also great ways of brainstorming ideas in an interactive way. You simply use a QR code and share with your class. In terms of writing activities, you may want to work on sub-skills during the lesson, such as punctuation, linking ideas, helping learners to use a wider variety of vocabulary or word order. And regarding feedback on writing, when learners send their work online, there are a few different ways of giving feedback using digital tools. The question is, writing activities, online or for homework? Let's look at some examples. You provide the learner with a model essay paragraph and ask the learner to identify where the main point is stated, in other words, the topic sentence, and the purpose of the other sentences, supporting details. This is an activity that should be done in the online lesson as the task is short and the learner will need support from you. You ask the learner to put five sentences in the correct order to create a cohesive and coherent paragraph. This should also be done in the online lesson as it checks the learner's understanding of paragraph structure. You ask the learner to write an essay paragraph on a topic already discussed in a previous lesson. This could be done either in the lesson or for homework. If the paragraph will take the learner some time, it might be best done at home. However, it could be done collaboratively in class with you guiding the learner. For example, what is your topic sentence going to be? You could also have a combination of the two, with some preparation done together in class and the learner finishing the paragraph for homework. You ask the learner to write a complete essay. This is best done at home, as the learner will need time to think, plan and write. 
and you provide feedback to the learner on the quality of their essay. This can be done orally in a Lex lesson or it could be given in oral or written form for the learner to review at home. Here are some tools for developing writing skills. Storybird. You may encourage your students to choose free art and then use it to create a short story, a storybook or a poem. Book creator. You may encourage your students to create a book with your own photos and add text. Make beliefs comics. Students are able to create free simple cartoon strips and write and improve. Learners copy and paste in their writing and receive immediate feedback generated by the computer on use of accuracy and use of English. This is free of charge. Here are some tools for understanding and practicing grammar and vocabulary. Kahoot! You may create free quizzes and play them in class with your learners competing against each other or competing in teams. Quizlet. You or your learners create a set of flashcards to review vocabulary and then use them to learn vocabulary through tasks and games. Quiz Your English. A free app that allows your students to compete against people from all over the world when playing grammar and vocabulary quizzes. And Explain Everything app. A great app which allows you to speak while writing or typing on a whiteboard as well as other documents. Let's take a look now at speaking. Online speaking requires that you listen and watch the students all the time. Monitor their language, give feedback and encourage participation and engagement just as you would do in the face-to-face -face classroom. Teachers can provide feedback by using the chat box at the end of a task in order not to interrupt the flow and discourage students from making an effort. Also, you can use the chat box or the screen to clarify questions. The advantage of teaching speaking online is the recording, which doesn't happen face to face. You and your students can watch the lesson again, focus on the positive aspects, lay emphasis on self-correction and improve their language. A speaking lesson. First and foremost, the lesson objectives. It's important once again to set clear objectives as you need to have a good reason for doing speaking activities. Lesson staging framework. Frameworks for online speaking lesson's are similar to those in a face-to-face -face lesson. You'll have some preparation work, then you'll do the speaking task, then you'll have some feedback afterwards. Instructions. You need to be especially clear when giving instructions, mainly because of the distance that comes with the online teaching situation. When giving instructions, make sure that your language is graded. You enunciate clearly. You check that the learners understand what to do. You give a demonstration of the activity and you may also type instructions in the chat box. Managing time lags. You should leave enough wait time after you ask a question so that the learner has time to receive the question across the distance, to think of an answer and then to produce the answer. Managing dominant and quiet learners. You may use the chat box to help weaker students become more confident and to chat to you until they are ready to speak. Feedback. You may use the chat box once again to give personalized feedback to individual learners directly. Use the whiteboard or a Word document to give whole class feedback. In terms of group speaking cohesion, remember, Learners are not in the same building and the distance created by technology may have an impact on group dynamics. 
They don't automatically build the same relationship with each, each other that they might in a face-to-face -face environment. So it's important that you help them build that relationship. It's important therefore to model good communication and polite, respectful behavior. Treat your students in the way you expect them to behave with each other and show interest in their lives in the way that you hope they show interest in each other's lives. If possible, use breakout rooms to allow for pair or small group work. This puts learners in control of the conversation and helps them get used to conversing online without you as you are the facilitator. If breakout rooms aren't available, put learners in control by asking one of them to ask another learner a question. That learner then asks another learner a question and so on and so forth. Make sure all learners ask and answer a question. These questions can be part of a lead into a topic or they could be practice of a particular grammatical structure. For example, questions with how often or questions about the past. Helping learners to establish a good rapport with each other and encouraging all learners to participate in the lessons will help learners to grow in confidence, be more productive and enjoy their lessons more fully. Here are some tools that will enable your students to develop their speaking skills. Voki. Encourage your students to create an avatar and add voice to it by recording themselves speak. Flipgrid. Create a discussion group with as many different discussion threads as you like for free. Add a video asking a question and learners add their own videos giving their answers. Voice Spice. Learners record themselves speaking for free and share the link with you and or other learners. Don't forget the flipped classroom. This is great for your online learning environment. You create or curate a short video presentation of the language. Learners watch the video for homework and complete a task. You check their answers to the task and do a short clarification task. The learner spends lots of time practicing the language and this enables them to focus on more communicative tasks during the actual online lesson. A tool to create a video for feedback on a flipped classroom is Screencast-O-Matic. It's free for up to 10 minutes. You may create videos of your computer screen and your voice, and a video if you like, save them in the cloud and share the link with your learners. Are you ready? Thank you and good luck.